Welcome back. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the history of CubeSats. CubeSats have become a technology that's been increasingly talked about over the last several years, and they're an important way that satellites are moving forward, and so I wanted to talk somewhat about these. The CubeSat idea was come up with a combination between two universities. It was originally done as an idea for student satellites, although it's gained acceptance to a much larger degree. The two universities that came up with the idea were um, Cal Poly, California Polytechnic State, and uh, Stanford University. Of the two, Cal Poly is the one that has kind of continued the standard and really pushed things forward. Uh, for a number of years, and while they may not be the most important players at this moment, they were instrumental in the early days, launching many of the early CubeSats with their Peapod design. And Peapod design is designed to fit onto the fit onto a launch vehicle, and it will interface with the launch vehicle. The individual satellites do not, unlike a traditional satellite. This particular one is a three-unit long one. It can hold three different CubeSats sitting end-to-end. -end. While there are larger CubeSats that are out there, this is kind of the, the de facto standard. And personally, I am more in favor of... Uh, the, my standards of CubeSats tend to be for the, the really small ones, such as one that would fit into a, uh, a Peapod. Of particular note to myself, if not to other people, are these two satellites. On the left we have Rincon 1 satellite, and the right we have Sacred. These two were actually launched by my institution. I had a, a, a hand in making these, putting these together. This is part of where I, first satellites that I ever worked with were these two satellites. They were launched in 2006 on a Dnieper rocket that unfortunately failed, so I didn't actually get anything into space at that point in time. But it was still a great experience, and I learned quite a considerable amount. Uh, from these, we can kind of learn some of the key design features. So you see this pin, in these cases, is a remove before flight pin. You pull that pin uh, right before you place it into the pea pod, and that will keep it steady. You can fold the antennas around so that they um, fit into the space. The standard is the main body of the CubeSat is 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters, and you're given a little bit of extra room at the top where you can have an antenna that's folded up or something like that that will make for easier deployment. You also have two sensors here on the bottom of the satellite that will allow it to know when it's deployed because unlike a traditional satellite, CubeSats usually don't actually talk directly to the launch vehicle. So you have to have some means of knowing that they've actually launched. And they may have one or more payloads. They're usually very simple. The student ones tend to just have radio signals that are sent back and forth. Um, some of them will have a little bit more interesting. Uh, Sacred had some experiments to detect how well radiation affected some uh, particular components to see if they could be used for space applications in the future. Although, as previously mentioned, the satellite failed. So, or the rocket failed to launch, so therefore the satellites never achieved orbit. Of some recent note is these two CubeSats, the Marco 1, Mars CubeSat 1 and uh, Marco 2. They were launched towards Mars as a part of the Mars InSight lander. And they can help to relay information from InSight when it's in the critical landing phase. These don't have the propulsion to actually orbit Mars, so they're just going to fly by and move on into deep space, but they could still be used for many things. These differ a little bit from the Cal Poly standard of size of CubeSats, which is 10 centimeters cubed. These are a little bit bigger and they, they fall under the 6U, so meaning you've had six CubeSats, uh, a 2x3 grid. This is what they would, uh, the size of them roughly, but it's a little bit bigger than even that. You can see some of the ingenious designs. They have foldable solar panels that they can have the power. They have small propulsion systems, uh, deployable antennas, and quite a bit of extra things. These 
CubeSats right now have set the record for the smallest spacecraft to be able to phone back home directly. They don't need a relay to help them to do so. So they're a, a big step forward. CubeSats I have really pushed the envelope of technology. They've allowed us to do smaller and smaller tests, and many of the CubeSats that are out there use very, very simple technology, commercial off-the-self stuff. Even though they were first built by students, they're now used by many experimental groups, such as NASA has used some to do some simple tests. Uh, the Mars or the Planetary Society is using them. Several commercial companies are using them to test some new piece of technology or something that just doesn't need as big of a satellite. And these extra satellites are able to achieve goals that they couldn't otherwise do. Anyways, thank you very much for joining me. Let me know whatever questions you guys have about CubeSats, about space exploration in general, or whatever else you guys have. I really appreciate all the support that you have given me. And for now, keep on tracking, and we will see you next time.